Okay, I, I think I'm going live right now, or I think I am live, so let me double check. Um, if I'm live and you could tell me in the chat, that would be great. So let me figure out what we've got going here. And, okay. I've never scheduled a live before, so that's what I think it's kind of different that I scheduled this ahead of time. Let me see if I can type in there. Okay. All right. All right. I think it's working. Okay. Hi, Steve. And hello, Lynn. How are you? All right. Everyone, happy... Um, Mother's Day, if it's Sunday where you're at, has, make sure you tell your mother Happy Mother's Day. Um, it's Saturday night here, so it's not Mother's Day yet. But and again, my name is Mandy, and welcome to my channel. Tonight we're going to be speaking about art uh, as it relates to the IELTS speaking examination. I kind of took a poll online with a, a group, an IELTS group that I belong to, and asked people, what is the most difficult IELTS speaking topic that you've had? And there was, mm, well, art was, I think, number one in my poll, but it was art, extreme sports, history, climate change, um, sports in general, aquatic animals. So if there's anything that you find difficult to speak about with IELTS speaking parts one, two, and three, go ahead and drop it into the live chat now, and we'll see what we can do we can talk about it. And hello, Harry, as well. And I, I left a link in there if anybody wants to have these slides in front of them. The ones that I'm writing on um, will only be me writing. So, you know, you can't write and it'd be live as well. So it's only me. But that link is in there. And then today's topic um, is art. All right. So again, Happy Mother's Day to anyone who happens to be a mom or anyone that's in Sunday. If not, happy weekend. And I hope you guys are doing good. So does anybody recognize any of the pieces of artwork that I put up here? One of them is not obvi is obviously not a piece of artwork. And I think only three of them are famous enough to be recognizable. Or you can say the, the type of artwork that you see. So... If we were to label them as different types of art, what would you what would you call them? So, oh my goodness, that's quite large. Let me make my pen size a little bit smaller. All right. So, what basically what I'm asking is, these are you know art mediums or materials or supplies. So the mediums that they have in this picture are scissors colored pencils, paintbrushes, looks like some markers and other things. Yeah, the Mona Lisa. I don't have the Mona Lisa up here, but that is a very famous piece of art. So yeah, I'm going to save that one and we'll put it on the other page for some ideas about vocabulary that we can use. Um, this type of art here is a mural. And you can't see, but only I could see because I know where I Googled it from. A mural kind of covers like an entire wall. Um, some people, and murals are done purposefully, not to be confused with graffiti, which is done usually without the, um, the permission of the building owner. This is a very famous painting right here called Starry Night. I believe it's by Van Gogh. This is a type of art down here. Does anybody know what type of art this is or what the name is? And then this is a famous modern artist that's kind of like an activist. So they use like art as their way. Yep, it's Starry Night. Excellent. Yeah, so this one, I'll start filling it in the one on the left and see if you can guess. So B is the letter of the first letter of his or her name. They're an anonymous artist as well. As far as I know, they're anonymous. So their identity is unknown. 
just waiting for the live stream to catch up to what I've written. Yep, that's David. This is David. So this sculpture is David. And I don't know what it is sculpted from. I'm going to guess marble. You have to use some kind of stone that's strong enough for sculpture. Um, I've never seen that one in person. This is also kind of graffiti. Or we could also call this person, they kind of give something that maybe like a newer collocation, protest art. And the artist, uh, his or herself is named um, Banksy. And you can Google Banksy. Banksy's artwork sort of shows up around the world anonymously as far as I know. And people don't really know who Banksy is as far to my knowledge, maybe his ident his or her identity has been revealed, but I don't know. And they they like to make people think with their artwork. Um, these are kind of small for you to see, so I would encourage you to Google Banksy or you know um, the Starry Night by Van Gogh or murals, different kinds of art. So let's go over today's questions, and then we can get started. We will. I'll use. Um, an idiom or collocation that I use with one of my students. Um, and she was like, Oh, what does that mean? Well, let's grab the bull by the horns, which meaning means let's, let's take on a difficult task, um, and just get, get right to it. So grab the bull by the horns, or you can take the bull by the horns. That means to just get started. All right. So today's questions are going to be do you like drawing? Do you like art? Have you ever visited an art gallery? Is there any artwork in your room or your home or your apartment, the place that you live? The second question, describe a piece of art you like. And let's move on to part three. These questions are going to be, how has art changed in the last few decades? So how has art changed in the last few decades? And I always have a misspelling. I just like to do it for fun. Let me see if I can fix it. How has art changed in the last few decades? What are the advantages and disadvantages of art education? What makes a work of art valuable? And are out, are, <laughs> this is a hard, when I was typing this one, I kept messing up. Are art galleries, are art galleries a good use of taxpayer money and government funding or taxpayer money or government funding, however you want to say it. Okay. And then when we work on these part three questions, we're going to try this strategy of O. Help me to remember this, guys. <laughs> o, R, E, C. So O, R, E, C. So when we give a part three, we're going to give our, oh my gosh, I need someone to spell for me. We're going to give our opinion. We're going to give a reason, an example, and then some kind of conclusion or a, or a consequence. And if those don't make sense right now, they will. Consequence. They'll make sense when we get there. Okay. All right, let's jump right into it. So the definition of art is very broad, and I think that's why this uh, topic maybe scares some people. It certainly scares me, one, because I'm not an artist. Um, I appreciate art, but I don't actively go out and seek it. So, um, I mean, I enjoyed art in school because it was a topic that was required. Um, and yeah, it was fun. It was a good way to express myself or relax, but 
Other than that, I wouldn't be what you call an art aficionado or an art lover. So art is the making of objects, images, music, etc. that are beautiful or to express feelings. And, or it can also be an activity through which people express particular ideas. You're right, Steve, art is variable. And so let's put that in here. Um, art is variable. So it's not just painting, drawing. There is all kinds of art. It can be lots of different kinds. So we'll, we'll um, list those as well. So all the types of art that we can think of. Um, so if I don't come across the type of art here and you want to add it, please definitely add it. I'm going to put Steve's idea in here of the Mona Lisa because if you don't know what the Mona Lisa is, go and Google it. Um, I highly recommend it. So if you don't know what to talk about when it comes to art, Google the Mona Lisa and you will have something to talk about. So vocabulary associated with art. We have painting. Try <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna add NFTs in there. Oh my gosh. You're making this very difficult for me. NFTs. That's a whole nother hour lesson. So painting, drawing, a mural, graffiti. I have drawing twice apparently. Sculpture, pottery, stained glass. And then so we could also put in here photography and we could even put, um, I think we're going to add movies down here because if we want to put art into different categories, these here would be what you call the visual arts, not all of them, but some of visual arts. And these here, music, theater, drama, movies, cinematography, are um, the performing arts. Movies, I'm not quite sure. Movies, I think, can be in both. I think it's kind of fluid. So these are performing arts. Okay, and then some of the ways that you can make art pencil, paint, brushes, pens, markers, spray paint, clay. Um, we could also, when we're talking about NFTs, people can make arts with a computer. That can be another supply or material. Mm, yeah, I think if we were going to say, okay, Harry has a really good point here. So let me see if I have an empty page. Okay. So if we were to divide school subjects into two categories, or even when we talk about our brain divided into two categories, some people are left-brained, some people are right-brained, it's really hard to just categorize people. So you have the arts. So if you think about it in terms of what kind of degrees could you get in the arts, and then you have the sciences. So in the category of the sciences, you have basically science, math, biology. Those are things that are really concrete learning um, categories. Math, science, maybe even um, programming might be in there, computer technology, engineering, those kinds of jobs or degrees. But if you're talking about the arts, Harry is right. Literature is considered a kind of art. Language, I mean, even in the English, even in the American school system, we call it language arts. That's our subject. So that's where our students learn about writing, reading, um, and all of the things associated with that. We have actual art classes. Um, we have music, drama, or theater. So actors and actresses. So we'll put literature and books. So even poetry would be in there. Um, Shakespeare's works of art are considered arts, pieces of art. They're considered masterpieces. 
um, drama, art, music, theater. Um, we can even put photography in here. I would also add in here maybe graphic design. So there are many things that you can consider an art form. Um, so that's why I think this topic kind of scares people and me as well, because it's so broad. So literature, books, language arts, meaning the art of your language, art, music, drama, theater, photography, and um, graphic design. Those, that is not a comprehensive list, though. So does that make sense? I hope so. <laughs> okay, so let's go back and we will talk about... Um, what you call people that create art, they would be called an artist, a painter, sculptor, actor, musician, a potter, a designer. You can also call them artistic. So when you're saying, I'm not an artistic person, and let's go along the lines of what Harry put in here, you could also put a writer or an author. And then when we're thinking about a writer or an author, we also don't want to forget an illustrator. And it's important to remember, yeah, a singer. Thank you. A musician and a singer. That's excellent. So these are all kinds of careers or jobs that can be considered uh, art-related jobs. Um, and there's more than just this. But it's hard to draw a definite line between them because you have people who can be, let's, we'll put it in here. I'm going to put it in between. You have someone who might be what is called a, a medical illustrator or even, I think I can, um, came across someone who was a botanist, but also an illustrator. So that is science and art mixed together. Um, and so that person in particular, their job is in the arts and the sciences. And then some ways to describe art would be um, a masterpiece. You could make a portrait or a landscape. Um, the Mona Lisa is considered a portrait. The girl with the pearl earring is considered a portrait. Um, so masterpiece encompasses many things. So you could say, wow, that movie was a masterpiece. That song was a masterpiece. Um, and then you can also, when you're talking about painting, you can have still life. These are just different categories. So <laughs> we are covering a lot of things. And then we have this anomaly up here. The NFT, non-fungible token, if anyone wants to put the definition into the chat box, the rest of us would be appreciative. And actually, um, I will look for a YouTube video because that's how I learn on what a non-fungible token is. Some people say they are here to stay and some people say they're kind of a passing trend. So a non-fungible token is also considered a type of art. All right. Does anybody else have any art-related vocabulary ideas? If not, let's jump over to some collocations. So these are not all of the collocations, but we have modern art, ancient art, abstract art, contemporary art. And sometimes people might call ancient art more like primitive art. So you might hear people say, oh, we saw some um, cave paintings some paintings in a cave or some hieroglyphics in, mm, in, a, in a pyramid. And Steve, yes, animation is another kind of art. So you can have claymation, stop motion animation, traditional animation. There is so much out there in terms of animation. Um, we can have anime type animation. So there's a lot of things to cover. And then some people say they're not an art lover. I'm sorry. If you have ever read a comic book, you like art. That is a kind of art that you can talk about. There's so much to be seen there and so much work put into that. The writing, the plot, 
is a form of art as well as the actual visual that you see. And some more collocations. Abstract art is not the same as primitive. Um, abstract art, so let's just open it up really quick. So what is abstract art? Uh, let's find an image of abstract art. So if you're looking at abstract art, this is the kind of paintings that you might see in a gallery and people might say, oh, my kid could have made that. Um, it's really sometimes difficult to define what it looks like. It could be lines, colors. Um, so let's look at the actual definition of abstract art. So um, the Cambridge Dictionary is what I like to stick to. And we will look up the definition of abstract art. So it's an idea or a feeling, not like a solid concrete thing that you're going to uh, abstract art and simple art. What's the difference between the two of these? Oh, okay. Abstract versus simple art. Okay. Or primitive art. I would say the main difference between those two, at least in my limited knowledge, is just the passage of time, actually. Uh, when we call things primitive art, we're talking about that it's really, really, really old versus um, abstract art might be more in modern times, um, maybe within the last uh, century, but primitive art is kind of from primitive civilizations like cavemen or um, you know ancient civilizations like the Aztecs, the Incas, and the Mayans. You could probably put abstract art as a kind of primitive art. Um, but that's not to say that people today cannot do abs cannot create abstract art. They still can. But that's a really good question. Um, I will look it up and see if I can put something in the comments later on what is the difference between abstract and simple or, primi or primitive art. All right, and so we have some more collocations. Artwork. You can call something artwork or you can say something is a work of art. So it's kind of almost the same words. Art lover, and you can call something a piece of art. So we don't say, that's very good arts, or you have made some very good art. You can call it, oh, what a work of art. What a piece of art. Um, uh, and that's some great artwork. So we talked about performing arts, visual arts. A little bit we touched on digital arts with NFTs and graphic design. And this is more prevalent nowadays because we have the technology. And this one was interesting that I found while looking is wearable art. So this to me kind of leans towards the, the fashion industry. So a lot of people express their emotions and their feelings through what they wear and fashion designers are the same way. So they create fashion designs and if you ask any fashion designer, what do you do? They'll say, I'm an artist. They create and produce art in the form of clothing or accessories. And then you can make art, but the more common collocations are creating art or producing art. So those are some more academic words. All right. Does anybody else have anything in here? Um, so Steve said animation. So let's make that into a collocation. So we can say computer animation. We can even have in here stop motion animation. And if you want to see a really talented stop motion animator, you need to look up the animist on YouTube. It is, I believe, a Japanese stop motion artist, creator, and he's amazing. So that's all I'm going to say. 
And Steve says, NFT art means 3D art, right? <laughs> That's a really, uh, a really difficult question because I don't even really know what NFT. I'm going to write what it stands for. It's not necessarily three-dimensional art. So it's called a non-fungible token. And let's see if I can explain it to the best of my ability. I, I can't even explain it in English, and I speak English. Because it's so, it's like me trying to explain Bitcoin. I don't understand it myself. So I'm showing my age here. So a non-fungible token is sort of like a digital. You can't touch it. Like you can't pick up, you can pick up the Mona Lisa and take it. A non-fungible token, you can't pick it up and hang it on your wall. You don't have it physically, but you have it in the digital world, like on the blockchain. Or um, I think I'm saying it correctly, but... This is a hard one, and if you don't know about non-fungible tokens or NFTs, I wouldn't recommend talking about them in the IELTS, but I'd love to talk about them with you at a different time, just for fun. All right, so some idioms relating to art are, took my breath away. So you can say, wow, when I saw the Mona Lisa in person, it took my breath away. It means it like stole the breath right out of you, and oh, when you do that, oh, that breathe in quickly. Um, you can also use this for someone that you think is beautiful. So you don't have to use it for just, just for art. So if you see someone um, and you want to give them a compliment, you can say, wow, you really took my breath away, meaning you looked really nice. Uh, another one is the art was jaw dropping, meaning like when you first look at it, your jaw literally drops open and you're like, oh my gosh. And I'm sure everyone can think of that emoji on their phone. If something is a lost art, um, it means it is uh, not around anymore or not many people do this or create this art. And so we could use the art form of calligraphy. So people used to use calligraphy a whole lot um, to write in books or you know um, posters or things that were hung up on the wall. And in certain cultures, calligraphy is considered an art form. And so we could say it's a lost art, meaning not many people do it. Um, and it's kind of becoming less common. So, all right. And then you can master the art of something. So I want to master the art of cooking, master the art of public speaking, master the art of writing, master the art of computer programming. So that's another idiom with art. And then this last one is a sarcastic statement. So I'm going to kind of use, I released a video this week about intonation. And so let's try it saying it two different ways. So um, that football match was as exciting as watching paint dry. So right now I didn't say it correctly because watching paint dry is the most boring thing in the world. Um, so you want to say that football match was as exciting as watching paint dry. So you sort of lower and drop your voice. So your intonation goes down and you indicate sarcasm. So you can say this about a college class that you're taking. Wow. My biology class was ex as exciting as watching paint dry. It just wasn't fun. It wasn't entertaining. Okay. So let's get moving into part one. So I'm going to let the live catch up to where I'm at, and I'll sit here for just a second or two or 30. I'm not sure what kind of delay we're on. And I'll type the first question into the chat. Do you like drawing? All right, and so do you like drawing? So 
this is obviously part one, so you're going to talk about yourself, and you're going to give a yes, a no, maybe, it depends, some kind of answer right off the bat. It depends on my mood. And this is a great one to sort of bring up the, the past. So you can show past tense or you can show present tense in this one. Yeah, I really liked drawing when I was a kid. Um, I remember drawing uh, in my class. Our teacher encouraged us to draw with all different kinds of materials so that we could get our hands uh, strong enough to practice handwriting or something like that. Um, do you like drawing? So let's use a synonym for like. Do you enjoy drawing? Or do you find joying, draw, or do you find drawing enjoyable? So that's one way of saying it. Do you like drawing? Yes, I like drawing. Or you can say, yes, I really do find drawing enjoyable. So it is enjoyable. Does it bring you joy? And um, there's not many, there's not really a lot of great synonyms for drawing, but you can talk about how you draw with a pencil. Maybe you use charcoal or chalk. Some people like to draw with chalk. Some people like to draw with pen or crayon. There's many different ways that you can draw. So let's give a quick answer. Do you like drawing? Yeah, I guess I do now that I think about it. When I was a little girl, I used to doodle um, on, on any piece of paper I could find. Um, and sometimes it made my mom and dad a little bit upset because I would draw in the margins of my textbook. When I finally got to middle school and I had an art class and we learned drawing, I was in heaven. I enjoyed drawing landscapes and still life, but if you ask me to draw a person, that's where I say, uh, that's where I draw the line. I didn't like drawing people. So, good. <laughs> All right, and Steve, no, I hate drawing because when I was a kid, I was punished by my teacher because of my stupid picture. Okay, Steve, I'm very sorry for your bad experience with your teacher. This is why some people feel strongly about art and school. Um, you have kind of two, two trains of thought here. You have the, the trained art teacher and then you have the classroom teacher um, or just the regular teacher. The trained art teacher feels that art is about the process, not about the product. Whereas the classroom teacher wants the art to look like the end product and if everyone's doesn't match, then it's wrong. So an art teacher will never tell you that your picture was stupid or punish you for it unless you purposely did something wrong. Um, that's just not how they're trained. Um, so it's about the process and not the product. So I hope that you will try drawing again. Maybe you didn't find the right kind of drawing. I vividly remember we had a drawing assignment when I was in sixth grade and we were supposed to do patterns and we had to create a repeating pattern and just continue it over and over again. And so I started with waves and then I added a curve and it was just supposed to look kind of mesmerizing after a while. So it was just supposed to be a repeating pattern. And this is the actual pattern that I created when I was in sixth grade with my art teacher, Mrs. Van Velser. If she is still alive today, because I'm quite old, she's probably still creating art. Um, so yeah, that was the, the pattern that I started. And she was just a wonderful teacher. One tip that she gave me is when you're drawing, if you're having a hard time drawing something, like say you're copying something um, from left to right, is to change your perspective. So when I had to look at something and copy it, 
she had me turn both things upside down and draw upside down instead. So, yeah. All right, let's move on. That was a long explanation. Okay. And this is sort of like, do you like drawing? But do you like art? So if you had answered like Steve before and said, no, I hate drawing because I had a bad experience as a kid. Once my teacher punished me for making a drawing that she called a stupid picture. And ever since then, I have been turned off to drawing. And now the examiner now asks Steve, who's upset about, do you like art? And Steve can maybe answer something like, well, apart from drawing, yes, I do like this kind of art or that kind of art. So we talked about um, visual arts, performing art. And so this is a very broad topic and you're going to need to narrow it down. Um, maybe you could say, you know, I don't like what people consider the traditional art, like painting and such as painting, sculpting, and um, drawing. However, I'm a huge fan of the performing arts. Um, when I was little, I wanted to be in movies and on plays, and we had a wonderful drama club that I was a part of, and I actually got to be Juliet in the play Romeo and Juliet, and that's where I came to love this form of art. So performing art is something you can talk about instead. So, and then we talked about the word like. So we have the opposite of like, hate. <laughs> um, abhor, which is kind of an old word. Or you can say, I enjoy, I love. Um, you can say, I can't stand art. I just don't understand it. And some of the paintings and drawings that I see in museums look like a kindergartner could have made him. I think that's called abstract art, but it's just not my favorite, not my cup of tea. All right. And let's move on to the second, I'm sorry, the third question. So let me write this one in here. Do you like art? Okay, and so Steve says, apart from drawing, I enjoy music and the visual arts. Excellent, just make sure you put an S at the end of arts because it's the visual arts. And so we'll put the. And this is a great idea right here, Steve to talk specifically about music or talk specifically about the visual arts that you do enjoy. So you can say, in terms of music, I really enjoy um, pop music or you know, techno music, whatever kind of music you like. And as far as performing arts or as far as visual art, the visual arts, um, I'm a big fan of Van Gogh and his paintings like Starry Night. Um, or you can talk about the Mona Lisa or any other piece of art that you know, or even a local artist. Okay, so before we were talking about art in very broad terms, and in an art gallery, it's gonna narrow it down for you automatically. So in an art gallery, depending on what kind of art gallery you go to, you're gonna see a much more narrower scope in terms of art. You're not gonna see a really beautifully decorated cake, like on the Cake Boss, that's considered a piece of art to me. You're gonna see more traditional forms of art here in an art gallery. Paintings, sculptures, um, maybe some primitive art or historical art, maybe different types of art such as modern art, um, abstract art, um, minimalism. One of my kids, is in an advanced art class and they're working on pointillism, which is just making lots of tiny little dots to create a piece of art. So have you ever visited an art gallery? Your answer would probably be yes or no. And yes is maybe a little bit easier, so let's, let's go on to no.
All right. And so Steve, you also said, I only love one drawing, one type of drawing, or one piece of, one famous drawing, and that is the Mona Lisa, or that's one famous painting. Yeah. So have you ever visited an art, have you ever visited an art gallery? Um, or I think in the IELTS, it's most likely going to say art museum. Um, because, hi, Jeff. Um, an art gallery, the, the main difference between an art museum and an art gallery is in a museum, you're going to just appreciate art and see it. Whereas in a gallery, things are for sale. You're still appreciating art and it's maybe more modern artists or local artists, but in art museum, you're going to see famous art or replicas of very famous pieces of art. And you usually cannot buy the original piece of art. You can buy a replica or things like that. So for me, yeah, I visited an art gallery. I used to live near Washington, D.C. when I was growing up. And we went on a day field trip in elementary school, upper elementary school. And we got to see lots of different museums. And I vividly remember visiting the uh, National Museum of Art in Washington, D.C. It was crowded with tourists from all over the world. And our teachers had um, lots of worksheets for us to fill out, so it was hard to enjoy. But I would say it was a pretty fun experience. Um, however, I couldn't tell you one piece of art that I remember to this day. So I remember the Dinosaur Museum better and the Air and Space Museum better. So, okay. So, and then let's go on to the no side. So what if you don't live near an area that has an art museum or an art gallery? Um, you can say, actually, to be honest with you, I have never visited an art museum or an art gallery for that matter, because I just live in an area that's kind of remote or an area that doesn't really encourage the arts. Our, our town is more of a techie town or more of... Uh, a town for, for industry versus the arts and culture. Um, in the future, I would love to visit some famous art galleries, maybe in Paris or Italy. Uh, if I get the chance, I have seen the Mona Lisa online, and it is one of my um, things on my bucket list to see the Mona Lisa in person. Okay. And so Steve says, I have never taken place at an art gallery. I've never been to an art gallery due to the fact that we don't have any of those. But I heard that in some galleries in the world, um, people often took place, they often take place every day and there's many auction, many auctions were held. Oh, happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and thank you for sharing the link as well. So Steve, Steve, I'm just going to, I'm curious, did you see auctions happening in the art gallery that you went to? And an auction is when they have a piece of art for sale and they ask, okay, this is what we're going to start it at and who will pay this amount and who will pay this amount. And they have like a bidding war. So yeah, but I love your answer. I have never visited an art gallery, never been to an art gallery due to the fact that we don't have any of these in my area. Um, but I've heard that in some galleries around the world, people often visit them and auctions are held. And maybe you could end it by saying, that's um, something that I would love to see in the future. Ah, yes, Harry, you are completely right. This has been happening a lot that art artifacts, artifacts, so, and pieces of art, so we can say artifacts, pieces of art, ancient artwork, um, is being returned to its original country or its country of origin. And what happens is artwork is stolen or during wartime they are plundered or taken um, by the invading military or the invading country, and they're sort of stolen and taken. It's like someone coming to your house and robbing you. Um, and so countries are trying to return 
that artwork to its country of origin because they're they have like a huge cultural value. Um, and who wants to be the one holding the stolen item? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Steve, you're right. Yeah, you can definitely. Batman, he does buy everything during an art auction. So he might be an art collector. Um, in, you know, Bruce Wayne may be an art collector. So these are people who like to, some people collect cars, some people, um, you know, buy real estate and that's where they invest their money. Some people buy NFTs or Bitcoin and other people like to have tangible things and they buy artwork or pieces of art and they're called an art collector. All right, let's keep moving. Is there any artwork in your room or your home? Is there any artwork in your room or your home? So I'm going to let everyone look at that just a moment. So is there any artwork in your room or your home? And I know some people um, taking the IELTS have children. So this is easy for parents to say, oh yeah, my kid made me this and that's the my favorite piece of artwork. But what if you don't have any kids and they haven't made any artwork for you so you don't have something like that? So artwork, we talked about in the beginning, it can mean many, many different things. Um, so instead of saying, yes, there is artwork in my room, and it is, you can say, oh, my favorite piece of art or my favorite masterpiece or what I consider a masterpiece is, you know, something. So artwork, we can call it a masterpiece. Um, a piece of art. You can say the actual thing that it is, a drawing, a painting, a photograph. And it might not be valuable to people outside of your house, but maybe it is priceless to you because it has some emotional um, connection. You have an emotional connection to it. So you can say, oh, yes, definitely. I have a priceless piece of art in my house, and that is the Mother's Day card that my kid just made for me. Or that is the, um, you know, the pottery that I made as a kid in my, in my art class. Um, it, it looks, it may not be valuable to other people, but it definitely has some sentimental value to me. And you can describe it. So if it's a painting, is it a portrait, a landscape? Um, is it a replica or an original? Is it um, homemade or something from your culture? So sentimental value. Okay, and Steve says, absolutely, yes, we have some pictures knitted by my mom. It takes her several months to finish her picture, and then she makes it into a picture. She is a great painter and knitter. Excellent. Good. This is excellent, Steve. So, yes, actually, we have some pictures knitted by my mom. It takes her several months to finish the piece of art. So, instead of using picture again, we can say it takes her several months to finish a single piece of art or a single masterpiece and then she creates it or turns it into a picture photograph or frames it and hangs it on the wall she is a great painter and knitter that's excellent very good and so some people's artwork in their house or in their room are simply photographs of people that have meaning to them or maybe it's uh, a photograph of some place they want to visit. So, all right. So we're going to go on to part two. 
So we're going to describe a piece of art that you like. You should say what the piece of art is, where and when you saw it, what it looks like or what it shows, and explain why you like this piece of art. And when it, we say what it shows, what it depicts is another great academic word. So what it depicts, um, and just for reference, if you're going to pronounce the word depicts, you don't have to pronounce k c t s. It's almost like you're going to say d and picks. So that is how it sounds. Um, and I'm going to just use the painting that we had at the beginning of Starry Night. So I could say, oh my gosh, you know, or I could start off by saying, I'm not really an art lover. I, I appreciate good art when I see it, but I don't actively look for art around me. And when I'm thinking about decorating my house or, you know, making a, a cozy space in my home, I don't go out to art galleries and look for new pieces. That being said, though, I vividly remember learning about the artist Van Gogh when I was in, excuse me, when I was in middle school and my art teacher showed us some of his works, some of his pieces of, some of his masterpieces, and my favorite one was the Starry Night painting. Um, I'm not really sure why it was my favorite. It just kind of spoke to me when I looked at it. Um, the the blues are, blue is my favorite color, and this this piece of, uh, this painting has many different hues and shades of blue, and I just really appreciate that Although it's not an exact depiction of the sky at night, the artist is sort of using some abstract strokes or painting strokes to create his version of what the night sky looks like. Um, if I had the chance to purchase a replica of Starry Night, I definitely would. Um, I'm not sure where I would hang it, but I definitely would want it to be uh, larger than life and in a prominent place in my house so everyone could enjoy it. So hopefully that helps you guys a little bit. So let's talk about some of your ideas. Steve could definitely use the, um, the art that his mom creates. So that would be a wonderful one. So we can use some family art. And what we, what we kind of went over in my answer, a piece of art that I like is, that would be parroting the question back to the examiner. So let's look at the overall topic of art. Give me some kind of statement about art as it relates to you. I'm a huge fan of art. I'm an art lover. Mm, honestly, I really don't love art. Um... The, at least not the traditional kinds of art, like paintings, sculpture. But my mom, I think, creates some wonderful masterpieces that she knits uh, for our family. And then you can go on to describe the latest one that she created or what they look like or what they're made out of. Um, and then you also really definitely want to tell, you know, how it makes you feel. It makes me feel sad. Uh, it's something I like to look at when I'm feeling down because it brightens my day. Uh, when I view or look at this art, it really lifts my mood. So, um, so a piece of art here definitely kinds of means a traditional kind of art. So um, I know we talked earlier about music and uh, drama and film and stuff like that being artwork, but here you definitely try to talk about a piece of art that you like. You don't have to have ever seen it. And so Steve said, like I said before, I want to talk about the masterpieces painted and knitted by my mom or the Mona Lisa. So yeah, Steve, those are two wonderful ideas. Um, I think that's, that's great. You'll have a lot to say about both of them. And if it's something near and dear to you and you have some kind of memory associated with it, you're definitely going to be able to speak easier. All right. So we're running out of time. So earlier, when we started, we said we were going to do the strategy of O, R, E, C, and I'll put them in here. So O, 
stands for opinion, reason, example, and conclusion or consequence. Hopefully I spelled consequence correctly. <laughs> My spelling has been atrocious tonight. All right. And so this is just one person's formula. This is how they do the IELTS, and it seems to help them. You need to use whatever works best for you. So um, and that's a really good idea, Steve. I think I will choose the first one because I saw her trying to finish her first piece of art. Yeah, that's excellent. I think that's a great idea. So how has art changed in the last few decades? Um, Harry brought up a really good point that um, stolen artifacts kind of have been being have been returned in the mo in the in the recent past. Um, they've been given back to their country of origin. So that's something that has happened with art. We also had. Um, NFTs brought up. So that's another idea that we could use. NFT. We can talk about art as it relates to technology. So we have digital art. I know one of my children just today created a piece of artwork. They were actually commissioned by someone to make an art piece of artwork for them and they wanted it to be digital. So they used, uh, I think, a free computer application. I can't remember what it's called. It's not Photoshop, but they drew the artwork, put it in different layers, and it was really cool because when they made a mistake, they could erase it very easily. They could adjust colors, move things around. So art has really changed, in my opinion, in the last few decades, and that's mainly due to technology. And um, we can talk about changed. So let's use some synonyms. So shifted, or we have seen a shift, a change. So maybe you have seen a shift from traditional forms of art to more digital art. You're right, Steve. And the digital art, Okay, this is a great answer. I'm sorry, I missed your first part. So in the past, the Mona Lisa was the model. It was sort of like, you're right, it was sort of the standard of artwork. Um, and it was the kind of painting that people aspired to create. Um, but now, recently, in the last few decades, digital art has, in excuse me, <sighs> digital art has increasingly developed. And that is due to our technology, our advances in technology, and the tools that we have at our fingertips to create art. So opinion, how has art changed in the last few decades? Uh, in the past, so this is your opinion, you can say, I believe art, there has been a huge shift or a huge change in the way we create and develop art. And then here's your reason, opinion, we can put reason and example together. So in the past, the Mona Lisa was the model or the standard to which artists held themselves. And most people use traditional mediums like painting and drawing and sculpture to create art. Uh, however, nowadays, digital art is increasingly developing, as increasingly developed because um, our technology has improved. And as a result, so there's your consequence, as a result, more and more people are able to create art. Like I mentioned before, the medium that people used before in the past was canvas, paint, paintbrushes. You had a lot of things, supplies that you needed, and it could become quite expensive. Um, and nowadays, we have, almost everyone has access to a computer or a tablet, and art has become widely accessible or more widely accessible to a larger um, group of the population. Sorry. All right, let's go on to the next one before I fall asleep. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of art education? 
art education. So advantages and disadvantages, we're going to talk about the pros, the cons. Um, some simple would be the good and the bad. Uh, you can throw some other ones in the chat. What are pros and what are cons? What are some more synonyms for those? And art education, so we can change it to art curriculum. Uh, we can even change it to art in schools. And when we talked in the very beginning, we um, had an idiom uh, which was a lost art. And this would be a great place to use this idiom. And a way we could use it is, um, you know, I, I honestly believe that art in school is actually becoming a lost art meaning not many people are um, see it as valuable anymore. Yeah, Harry, you're exactly right. Art in the past or was expensive and a low success rate because we didn't have social media to blast our art to the world. And we um, to become an artist, the term starving artist is not a term for no reason. Many artists didn't make a lot of money or they did it on the side just for pleasure or for a hobby, hoping that they could make a living. Whereas nowadays, if you're an artist, there are many different facets that you can pour your art into to make a living. Graphic design is one of them, a huge one. We live in an increasingly digital and visual world where um, designing a car is considered art form or creating home appliances is now considered a form of art. So these kinds of things, a designer, even an engineer, making something work and then making it look good while it works is another form of art. All right, and advantages and disadvantages of art education. So Steve is saying about the pros, students may find their passion. Exactly. Um, they can even earn money from art or they can raise awareness from their masterpieces, from their masterpiece. Exactly. And Banksy um, is a great example of someone who likes to use their art to raise awareness. So we could say that, you know, they could have protest art or um, I know... There's a lot of people creating artwork around global warming and climate change. Okay. So advantages and disadvantages. So disadvantages are like exactly what Harry said. Uh, it's expensive. There is a low success rate to become an artist, especially if you're going into those kind of traditional forms of art, such as being an, a painter or a sculptor, a potter, things like that. They're kind of sort of a niche. They're very narrow. Um, and advantages are exactly kind of what Steve said. It can help children be find their passion. It encourages creativity. And also, art can be combined with the other subjects. We talked in the very beginning about the arts and the sciences, and there's no reason to keep them apart. You can definitely merge the two together, and that way some children who maybe were not very interested in a science lesson, when you bring the art aspect into it, suddenly wake up and become excited about these things because you show them how they can be merged together. If you look at um, a flower, you can see something beautiful and something that is artistic, but you can also talk about the symmetry um, and the angles and things like that related to mathematics. And you can talk about the science related to that same topic of a flower. So you don't have to keep them separate. Okay, so Steve says, on the other hand, it affects the student's schoolwork, such as math or physics. Yeah, and if we look at art education, 
students, I believe studies show is another thing you can do in part three. Studies show that children who earn degrees in the arts have lower earning power than those who earn degrees in the sciences and maths, those STEM categories, science, technology, engineering, and math. They earn a large, larger proportion of money than those who are working in the arts. All right. And what makes a work of art valuable? So what makes a work of art valuable? And we talked a little bit earlier, but we're going to throw this word out here. Priceless, meaning you can't put a price on something. So you can call it a priceless work of art, a priceless piece of art. The Mona Lisa is a priceless work of art. The Starry Night is a priceless work of art. The, the bust, or I'm sorry, the sculpture of David, the Sistine Chapel is a priceless piece of art. So they're valuable. They can also be expensive. So that's in terms of money, but we don't have to just speak about money. We have to see, um, you know, is there an emotional or sentimental value? And I know it's easy to say, I feel in part three, and that's okay to say it, but here we're going to try to talk in general terms. So we're going to, you know, and this question is really difficult for me. That's why I put it on here because I don't know the answer. So what makes a work of art valuable? Um, and we can try this term. The value is in the eye of the beholder. So the value is in the eye of the beholder. So the person looking at it is the person who gives value to this art. If it means something to one person, then it is valuable to that person. Uh, we can say that about a lot of different things, but you can say its value is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, for example, a child may bring home a piece of artwork that they created in primary school, and to someone outside of their family, it might seem kind of messy or even ugly, but because it is given to their family or their, their parents, and there is some emotional and sentimental feeling behind it, that, that piece of art is priceless um, to that parent. As well, we can also use the example of the Mona Lisa. Many people have seen this piece of artwork, and many people, the collective, all agree that it is a priceless piece of art, a priceless work of art, or a masterpiece. So if people feel that something is valuable, enough people feel it is valuable, then the collective sort of feels it's valuable or it's expensive or worthwhile. So I don't really love my answer, but maybe you guys can come up with a better one. What makes a work of art valuable? If you have something better, please drop it in the chat either after, after this lesson or while we're talking now. All right, and then here's my last one. This was kind of hard for me as well, but I threw it in there because we like to talk about difficult questions. Are art galleries a good use of taxpayer money or a good use of government funding? So try saying that fast. Are art galleries, and actually we're going to change that again, art museums, a good use of tax payer money or government funding. So are art museums, and I'm going to change this to museums instead of galleries because we talked about they're a little bit different. So are art museums, and most art museums, at least in the United States, in Washington, D.C. anyway, those art museums are free for people to enter, and they are fully government-funded. 
There's other art museums or art galleries like the, the MoMA, the Mo Museum of Modern Art in New York, where you do pay a small fee to enter. Um, but people, you know, gladly pay that fee so that they can see priceless works of art. So are art museums a good use of taxpayer money or a good use of government funding? So here you're going to say yes, some form of yes, some form of no, or you can be on the fence about this. So maybe you are on the fence. And I'm going to take this last argument here for my opinion, reason, example, conclusion, or consequence. Are art museums a good use of taxpayer money or art museums a good use of government funding? This is a really interesting question. I'm actually on the fence because on the one hand, I, I love art. Um, I think it has cultural value and historical value as well. Um, it can really bring people together and help them um, you know, understand one another or different cultures. On the other hand, I also see where taxpayer money could be used in more concrete ways to bring about um, positive change more immediately than an art museum might. An example of that is you could take the money that a government pours into an art museum and instead use it to um, help mitigate climate change or pollution in an area by, you know, cleaning things up or helping to clean up the water and the streets. Um, so while I really enjoy art museums and I feel they have, you know, cultural value or value to a society, I can see the other side of the argument where that money could seem like it's being wasted on things of the past instead of things of the future, like climate change, the environment, pollution, education, and so on. So, all right. And so that was my idea on the fence. Um, you can pick yes, you can pick no. If you do pick on the fence, you're making it a little harder for yourself because you have to do, you know, you have to do two opinions there. You have to talk about two different things and you have to use those discourse markers on the one hand, on the other hand. Um, I can see both sides of the argument. Um, while I see this, I also see this. Or I understand the feeling behind, you know, art museums and why they're valuable, but I also um, agree that the money could be used elsewhere. So I think this might be our last slide. Okay. Yeah, I think it is. So does anyone, without writing your whole long answer, give me a yes, a no, or a maybe, or on the fence? What is your opinion? Just one word, answer yes, no, maybe. Do you think art museums are a good use of taxpayer dollars, taxpayer money, or, or government funding. So it doesn't matter. We're not going to be punished for our answer, but I just want to, I'm curious as to what people's feelings are. So are art museums a good use of taxpayer money and government funding? So type in the chat if you're able to, if you have a second, yes, no on the fence. I'd love to see kind of take an informal poll here. And while you guys are doing that, <laughs> okay, we got a no. I, and Josh says yes. Joshua says yes. Uh, like I said, I'm going to say a maybe. You know, I have an artist in the family, my, my kid. So, yeah. No, yes, maybe. All right. So that's three of us who answered. And while you all are answering, I'm going to go back to the beginning so we can conclude and talk about what we went over. We've gone way more than an hour and I can tell it in my voice. So in case you weren't here when we started, this first picture 
is actually a Banksy picture? Steve says no. Okay. And whatever your answer is, I'm not going to judge you on your answer. I mean, because I think, yes, they're valuable, and I think, no, they're not valuable. Um, no one else is going to judge you either. So this is a Banksy picture. Um, Charmaine says no. Steve says no. Joshua, yes. Harry, no. Me, maybe. Look, I can't even decide. So anyway, this picture right here is just from Google. Kind of some of it is cut off. So if you look at this, it looks to me like it might be a pencil drawing, a line drawing. Um, and what is it? It's a kid playing with his toys. And further down here that kind of got cut off, there is a basket of superhero toys. You see Batman. I think there might be Superman, Spider-Man. But the superhero that he's holding in his hands is a nurse because this drawing was made in the midst of the very, very uh, midst of the pandemic where we all know that nurses are superheroes. Um, you know, they are definitely the backbone of any society. And this kid, you know, sees that in his toys. So, all right. And Marjorie says, yes, here in our country, we have numerous artists whose talents are not being placed in the limelight. Okay. So Marjorie, I, I understand your argument too. If the government does give money to art museums and artists. They're also giving people a living. So yeah, they're helping. I mean, you know, the government gives money to corporations, to tech, to the environment. Why not give it to those things just because you can't see an immediate return? So yeah, I definitely. And Charmaine, you say you're in two minds, of two minds about this. Yeah, that's kind of hard. I understand. I agree with you. All right. So we're going to finish up this is where we started with art. We talked about some different art. Mural, The Starry Night by Van Gogh, The Sculpture of David, some graffiti, which is, um, this is another graffiti art piece of art by Banksy. Um, and we talked about some different art mediums. Um, and our vocabulary, we went all over the place. But anyone who joined us a little bit later, we're looking for you to answer what is an NFT. And I Googled what is an NFT in simple terms. So hopefully we can look for a link to help explain that. I think it's important for us to learn new kind of buzzwords or new words. So yeah, you never know when it's going to show up on the IELTS or when you can impress someone with your knowledge about it. So lots of different vocabulary related to art. Um, and we divided the kind of education system or jobs into two kinds of sections here where we talked about the arts and the sciences. So we have the arts of literature, books, languages, art, music, drama, theater, photography, graphic design, and so on. And then we have the sciences like math, biology, chemistry, algebra, physics, um, engineering, uh, rocket science. And then we also talked about how you don't need to necessarily separate the two. Some of these things can be married together. Art does not have to be separated from science. It's actually great when you have both of them um, in the same you know, environment. It can be very useful. And then we had some collocations. So yeah, I think I'm going to end with our picture of different pieces of art. It was great to see everybody tonight and happy Mother's Day to those of you that are moms or someone's mom figure. Um, and I will see you hopefully next weekend where we will talk about a different thing. And if you have any ideas about what you guys want to talk about, go ahead and drop it in the chat. All right, I'm going to end and I will see you all later.